Women for Unlimited Democracy and International NGO. And last but not least, our one and only Gen Zer, leading Gen Zer at Wolf Summit and the host of today's uh, event. So, a round of applause for Anna. Yeah. Good luck. Thank you. I'm going to take that back. Thank you, my dear. It was great. Um, it's a great opportunity to finally sit down. Honestly, it's a rare occasion for me during those four days, but finally, I'm very glad. Let me just remove the mic. Maybe someone wants an extra one. Do you have one? Yeah. Okay. I'm very, very happy to see everyone and welcome you here on our um, How Gen Z is Changing the Workplace panel. Uh, we kind of wanted to go a bit deeper and to explore all of the topics. And I think I've got quite a bunch of people here who are extremely intelligent and very diverse. Let's start with a round of introductions. Ada, please. Uh, hello, everyone. So I'm Ada, I, I'm still a student, I'm doing my master's right now, I hope I will finish it because I'm speaking right now at a conference and perhaps I might, I should write my thesis. <laughs> and I'm a CEO at, uh, and co-founder uh, of IT Girls Foundation and uh, just like in few words we are encouraging kids to go into technology. Thank you. Adesio, maybe you next. Uh, hello everyone, my name is Adesio Santana, I'm originally from Brazil uh, and I'm living here in Poland for more than 10 years already. Uh, in the meantime I've been working for companies like uh, Hewlett Packard, Credit Suisse, IBM, DXC Technology and EY. I'm a former TEDx organizer uh, and it's a great pleasure to be here with all of you. It's a great honor for us, honestly. Such a broad portfolio. <laughs> Cannot wait to hear your, <laughs> your parts. Um, and Arina, please. Thank you so much for the invitation. My name is uh, Arina Yena. I am activist and spokeswoman to NGO Unlimited Democracy. I would like also to say thank you to all Polish people to Polish nation, what are they doing to Ukraine right now and how they support us. Originally, I am from Ukraine, but last two years of my life, I live in Austria. Thank you so much, guys, for supporting us. This is vitally for us right now. We will never forget this. And of course, thank you to all the allies who support in Ukraine. Thank you so much. I think thank you indeed. Maybe a round of applause for Polish people. And for Europe at all, um, a, great, a great pleasure and also a big honor for us to be considered um, a brotherly nation, right, with, with Polish people. That's something that we would never forget. Um, maybe let's stick to the topic of Ukraine just a little bit. Uh, since Arina here, um, she's, for me personally, I think she's the person who activated the whole Vienna to stand up for Ukraine and to show who are Ukrainian people. So maybe you can tell us a bit more about yourself and your activism. Maybe what are the people involved there? Any change in, in generations, only young people or everyone else? Yeah, thank you so much for this round of compliments for me. Obviously, the work that has been done in Vienna and in Austria in activism sector for Ukraine these days, it's definitely not only, only my work because a lot of people, Ukrainian diaspora, mobilized themselves very quickly and the work that's, that that is still going right now is amazing and uh, these people inspires me a lot in the in everyday life in what are they doing and how they're doing this um, about my activism i guess um like three and a half months ago four months ago i could never imagine that activism is going to be my whole life, almost 24 hours per day, seven times a week. I could never imagine that I'm, I'm going to join a big volunteer movement, a big activist, activism movement. So 
yeah, and this now playing a significant role in, in my life. I would like also to say that my example of activism was not because I was always planning that my life has to be changed with activism, I have to change this world or some kind of this stuff. It's just happened because of the situation which is which happened and is still happening to my country. And I just woke up on February 24th at as I guess every Ukrainian around the world and I was completely shocked and I understood that I could not stay in one place and I just could not follow the news. I need definitely to do something more. I need to, I need, I, I need actions from myself so then I wouldn't be ashamed to look into the mirror and I will understand that I've done something during this war I helped somebody because uh, because it happened that I, I was not in Ukraine when the invasion started. I was in a very safe place and I'm still in a safe place. I do not have to hide from the missiles. I do not have to uh, hide from the bombings every day as my family had to do. So I understood that. I I, I just have to do something, I must do this. So this is how the activism came into my life and I would not say even like came into, it's broke into my life. And I'm very thankful also for a lot of people who surrounding me right now and who supporting Ukraine, who supporting me, who supporting us and who supporting my team in this, in this way. Um. Honestly, it sounds very inspiring and it also gives a lot of hope. Um, probably most of my team know already, but during the invasion I was in Kiev, so for me the opportunity to see that people are actually talking about it and it's not something that happened just to me in my apartment building it was very, very important. But I also feel like it could have blossomed uh, the inspiration and the motivation for others also to join in with the... Um, uh, you know, uh, w w with the way and the news, uh, Ada, how it was for you? Maybe a couple yeah, of words. I think it's actually very important to talk about this. That because for some people it was like, okay, I'm helping, but I don't want to like tell the world I'm helping because it would be like showing off or something. But I do not feel that way because it is important to talk about it and to show that you are helping because, as you said, Anna, you might inspire others to do the same. And it actually quite happened a lot, uh, like with my friends. Uh, like right after the invasion, we were like paralyzed. But then suddenly, like on Monday, because it happened on Thursday, and on that Monday people were all over the city helping refugees and it was amazing like s to actually see people come together as a nation like uh, in Poland and uh, helping Ukrainian people uh, to adapt in Warsaw. It was actually very uplifting, I think. I guess um, during this panel we will definitely will touch upon the differences between the generations, but what startled me when I was volunteering is how you said the, uni the, the unity, right, uh, of the whole, um, of the whole nation, and all of it was amazing, actually, and I think it gave me also power, like, to do more, and I wanted to get involved, and I went actually to the shelter, and it was very hard, like, you know, to talk to all the people because they were terrified, but actually, like, my friends followed not only me because I got inspired by my friend also so I think it's very important to talk about it and thank you Arina for like sharing your story also thank you thank you so much for support and again thank you for all the all the allies who support Ukraine in this awful time but Ukraine will prevail and then we're gonna throw a huge party for our victory strongly believe in that and if I can add one thing, yeah, th this is something that it's uh, spanning across different generations. So, for example, Zelensky is from the same generation I am. Uh, and, uh, but it's uh, really inspiring also to see how the youngest generation is uh, bringing awareness to the rest of the world because they are technology savvy, they, uh, they, they believe in, in, a, in a different sense of purpose. 
than other generations. So it's it's so important. This is what you're doing, and uh, I really hope that the the table will be turned pretty soon. Yeah, thank you so much again. And I would like to add also some words about differences of generation, probably in what are we doing right now. Uh, yes, uh, Zelensky, he's from Gen X. Um, I am from Gen Z. But I would like also not to to separate people to generations right now and to give a few examples. So, for example, in the... 2000, in 2013 in Ukraine, when the Euromaidan started and when the Revolution of Dignity started, the first people who went outside to the streets and who who organized the first protest, it was younger generation, it was students as well as me. So I would like, the, my point, which I would like to say, and what I guess it sh is really important that young generation and young people and their voice is very important because it could change a lot, definitely. And we have a lot of examples, not only in Ukraine, but in the world history when younger generations were protesting and they made actual changes in the world and they and they started to do actual chan changings, changes much earlier and before than the governments and world greatest powers started. So yes, I guess kudos to the all younger generations and yeah. It makes me wonder, but did we raise ourselves to be this way? Or did we have someone previously before us to um, put on some values in our heads, the ones that, you know, uh, they felt like are the right choices? Is it the trauma of our upbringing that made us this way? Uh, I also wanted to, uh, first of all, make sure which generation are you defining yourselves to be? Me and Arina, we said that we are Gen Z. What about you guys? Is it that easy for you? Uh, I might go first. It's not so easy for me as you, Anna, probably knows because we talked already, but I'm like uh, 1998, like you know <laughs> now how old I am. But it's like in between millennials and Gen Z, like actually if I had to, la I don't like labels, so maybe not put a label on it. I, I feel like some of my uh, like character traits are from millennials, some, on, some are from Gen Z, because like during my childhood, I didn't have actually that much of technology. It became like a bit later than for some people, but I think it much depends on the definition we use. I feel like in between. <laughs> And, and I think in my case, I, I don't have much choice. Yeah, it's like people look at me and say, "Oh, this guy's old." Uh, I don't think that. But I, I'm I, I'm officially from a Generation X. Yeah, and uh, the thing is that I I, I agree yeah, with the other panelists that that, that uh, labels. I think sometimes they they don't uh, they're not good. For example, to if you talk about the challenges in the workplace or the revolutions which are important. Uh, currently, I think this. Uh, if I think about myself, I, I think my upbringing. Uh, I had a mom which was crazy, and uh, and I think she she put a lot of things in my head. Like for example, the uh, the the things about uh, being always inquisitive and uh, never uh, get the kind of first answer f for granted. Uh, so yeah. Part of my family, even they being from a, from a different generation, I think I kind of incorporate things from, from the people that came before me, but I'm learning so much. Uh, I had the opportunity of working in different companies and learning with people that are younger than me, and, uh, and uh, I'm learning a lot. Can you feel like the drastic difference, maybe some uh, special um, qualities or, I don't know, skills or points which make you uh, feel this difference between you and, and, and newer generations? I mean, newer? Uh, I think it's, a, it's an interesting thing. I was, I was talking to someone before the panel and I was just saying, look, I, when I look at this generation, I just see myself like 20 years ago, like trying to challenge things from people from the other generation, which I think it's a healthy thing. It's a, but there's a sense of purpose. 
a sense of uh, my voice matters, which is in this generation, which I haven't seen in other generations. And I think this is something commendable. Yeah? Not sure if I answer, Anna, but uh, the, the, is it? No, uh, no, it's, it actually makes perfect sense. Uh, but maybe, Arena, you can um, tell us a bit more what do you think are the qualities uh, which are distinct for the Generation Z? Um, what are the values we are trying to pursue? Thank you for this question. Um, I also agree about this labels thing about generations. In my opinion, this is kind of depends on which generation and where they were born. Because, for example, millennials who, who was born in the United States and millennials who was born in Soviet Union, in my opinion, completely different people, as well as Generation Z. Because um, still, I, I, let's say that I'm early Gen Z, uh, but I'm pretty sure that like this technology um, impact uh, came into my life a bit later than for the people from the Western countries. So yeah, in my opinion, I guess it's also, it's a, it's a thin ice, if we, if, if we can say this way, because like, it, it's, it's very personally and it really depends on the conditions where people were raising when they were born. And yeah, this, this is my opinion on this question. So if I, will, uh, if I were to build up on that, so what are, let's say, your um, core values? What do you feel is the most important thing when you, for example, are applying for a job or making some tough decisions? I guess I also, my, my, my biggest, instrument wouldn't be that like yo guys I'm Gen Z so yeah take me take me give me a job for day varsity yeah uh, I would I, I guess that every like all these fears where Gen Z would like to apply for jobs right now are very competitive and you have to be the best of the best to get the job that you like and yeah in my opinion I would uh, I guess I would say that uh, I'm I, I don't know, because it's always hard to, to talk about yourself from the side, but probably, first of all, I will, I will work on my CV and will work on my background then to show the people uh, who, who I apply to. So I, I'm, I deserve this job and yeah, I, I, I'm worth it. So if I were to put it like um, maybe in some shape, I would say not be, um, the, the value would be like to be able to express yourself without putting yourself in some boundaries, right? Something like that uh, to fit the job. Definitely, and the the thing that I like right now in the modern world that there there is no borders. Like people can move all around the world and applying for a job all around the world and working in the spheres that they like also in almost every country in the world and yeah i guess it makes me it, it 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 also inspires me a lot and i guess that gen z in this case can change a lot of the in the world as well as we said already that uh, i'm i'm very I, I i do very agree with the statement that gen z is gen z voice is louder than than previous generations and we're ready to to say like straightforward, what do we think? And I guess, I guess it's beautiful. I completely agree. Ada, maybe you have some some observations on the differences between the Gen Z and other, or maybe a bit more on the values. Uh, sure, I think like each generation is a bit different. I think that's quite obvious. And obviously, as Adesi has said, like we learn from our parents and watching them and growing up. And sometimes we want to be like them, sometimes we don't. But it all comes together. And I think like what is very specific about Generation Z, we are looking for jobs that uh, we will be 
able to like the values of the company will go good with our values and it won't won't be just empty words like you know the company is this and that but then you come to the company and it's like you see there's nothing happening like that uh, I think uh, that's not a good way to go for a company uh, because I me personally, I value authenticity, and uh, well, I like when the company puts like uh, some action behind their uh, words, so it's not just empty words. Yeah, that that sounds very very great, and I also thought that maybe that is the reason we have so many volunteers um, in the Gen Z. I mean, obviously especially during this tough time, everyone is volunteering and that's a tremendous help. But I, I remember that we mentioned um, when we were talking with you earlier that you have had a research or read research about the percentage of volunteers. Maybe you can tell us about that. It was very... Yeah, actually, it, it wasn't about like percentage of volunteers. Uh, I, I actually know this number, do it's like 73%. Doha has done some research on that and 73% of Generation Z says that activism is very important to them and would like to volunteer in some uh, non-government organizations and we actually in our foundation we do have a lot of volunteers that would like to do some jobs and help uh, encourage the kids and I actually love their passion uh, that they do want to help uh, and but also I, I know what Anayak you uh, what you wanted me to talk about now uh, I remember that I have read uh, research which struck uh, struck me greatly because it said that what every third like 30% uh, of Generation Z would rather not work than work for a company that uh, is not uh, well fitted with their values so that's a lot, like every third. So like we are sitting here three girls and one of us would rather not work than to work for a company that uh, has no values. I wonder who that would be. <laughs> oh, but I, I, I got some story to tell you. I was, like, I was working once for a Swiss bank and the CEO, uh, he went to tribunal. He, he had the charges for evading taxes from, from the private banking customers. and. Uh, and he was convicted guilty. Yeah? And then I remember I came back home and I just look at my son and say, he was asking, so dad, how, how was it work? And I said, oh, great, dad is working for criminals now. And uh, I think it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's an example of a company where I did not like to stay. And over my, my professional experience, I, I've been trying, of course, to, to find different kinds of opportunities. But I think it's, uh, it's so important for me being now, for example, in a, in a company which was recognized as one of the most ethical companies in the world, that, that makes a difference to me. And, uh, and I think it, it for sure does make a difference yeah, to, to, to the Gen uh, Z generation. That's a good thing. And I would like also to add that now in the modern world, there's a lot of opportunities to apply for for people to work in for non-government, non-profit organizations, thousands of NGOs around the world. And I guess right now, a lot of Gen Z people, let's say like this, they will choose NGOs and non-profit organizations over the companies and corporations because people want to do the job that can impact, that has an influence on something. And a lot of people now interested more in the job and what their job can change and change something more in the world that change the, their, their financial statements and their, their bank account numbers. So yeah, I'm pretty sure that also a lot of people will choose, let's say, also social work uh, above yeah. business and above above corporation banks. And I guess I guess it's also uh, a thing that Gen Z opened as like in in themselves that working for working for nonprofit organizations and non government organizations is as important as working for business. I 
may, may I add some here? Like, uh, I totally agree with you, Arena, because I actually can observe that among my friends. I have a lot of friends that, you know, like are two or three years after uh, college, they had their master's done or uh, bachelor, and they are study, uh, they are working at some jobs. And suddenly, like, you know, after one year or two years, it depends on a person, they are like, okay, but what's, like, what do I bring to the world? And they actually started to have a problem because they didn't uh, think about it at first. They just, you know, they wanted to have a job, like uh, get on their feet and uh, that's totally understandable. And now after some times they start to think, I want something more. I want to see the impact of my job uh, that puts some like good into the world. Or actually I want to see the changes that I make or I'm a part of and I totally, uh, get that actually too. But I also feel like um, the decision in the first place to go somewhere just to have a job, uh, sometimes um, for some reason I feel like young people now are getting mature and pressured to be getting matured um, with, with a very, very like short and limited amount of time. And maybe this is the, the, the reason why so many wrong decisions were made in the first place. Uh, but I also was thinking that when you are finally recognizing that you wanted to um, impact the world and um, have some, some, some value in the job you're doing, uh, it can also be used against you sometimes. Because, uh, right, there are a lot of uh, companies who are, for example, now greenwashing. And um, is there any way maybe at SAU, as a, one of the most experienced people here, uh, can um, tell us a bit more? You have a lot of uh, experience with corporations. How do you feel? Um, they, uh, are they actually aligning with the nowadays values or are they just pretending? And how I, I think do we it's know? A, I think, first of all, it's, it's an important think to don't fall into that pitfall generalizations, right? So that not all big corporations are evil or not necessarily they're just looking for profit because, okay, let's look at what's happening here on the, the World Summit, right? So like uh, to VCs, like entrepreneurs, investors, that's a very healthy thing. Uh, there are companies which they have in their DNA uh, from the start uh, they are committed with uh, diversity, with inclusion, with equity. Uh, they sponsor, um, um, they, they try to reduce the gender gap. They want women to be more empowered. Uh, they work with foreigners. They work with uh, groups with disabilities, LGBT+. Uh, plus. Uh, I've been working in companies which are like that. Um, and. And even like in the example which I mentioned to you, yeah, we had a good amount of volunteers, for example, that had been going out there to, to plant trees or to uh, paint walls on an institution for children. Uh, there was always a big level of commitment from, from that companies to give back. Uh, I heard, of course, about other companies in which that kind of mentality wasn't so ingrained. And, uh, and I think if, if the question is if there is uh, sometimes just talk about uh, bringing a positive impact to the world from some companies, I would say yes. Yeah, I haven't been in any of them yet. <laughs> uh, but I think it's the, the, the importance is that the, this creates a kind of benchmark that uh, even when you look at uh, entrepreneurs and, for example, the, the things that they address, like, for example, IT girls, it's a great example, right, to, to how can we empower women, right? Uh, or uh, the, the work which Arina is doing on her NGO, right, which is let's have a, a free country and, and tell to the world the things which are, which are happening now, which are not okay, yeah? Uh, this is a big movement that, that, that we have around the world. And, and, and I think, uh, again, Gen, Gen Z is, is leading that kind of conversation. Yeah? You, you, can, you just think, you know, in, in 20 years from now, uh, all Gen Z will be in leading positions. Some of them are already, right, if you start to look. But uh, at least while looking at corporations, that's where they're going to be, yeah? Yeah, go ahead. 
ahead. Yeah, for sure. Like, uh, let's not generalize this. I actually also work for a corporation. Uh, for three years, I have been. I like my job. And uh, there are some very good companies that uh, have great values and actually do nice initiatives. And uh, also, the, uh, the war has shown us this because a lot of companies actually gave their employees like few days in a month off for volunteering work and they were paid so that's actually a very nice initiative also and uh, I know that all of my friends use them and uh, I think that's one of the like good things that companies can do and make change actually because they uh, enabling their employees to do so they are actually also uh, empowering people to go and volunteer. I would like also to add that yeah let's not here demonize all the companies and corporations and say that only bad guys works for big companies, big corporations, be <laughs> because, because uh, in activism in like last three months, what, what am I doing? I've met a lot of people from a lot of different big companies who, who came to us and said that, yeah, we're a big company and we have a possibility to help you, to, to support you financially, uh, to support uh, you and buy you medicines and you will send it as a humanitarian aid to Ukraine. So please do, please give us a list of medications that we have to buy or please give us a list of uh, I know baby food that we can provide to Ukrainian children. So yeah, let's not demonize a lot of good companies and corporations who support people and who provide a good and great job in the world. And they actually have resources and manpower to do that. In IT Girls, we work with a lot of organizations and without them, we wouldn't be able to perform our workshops with kids. So like uh, the corporations are needed and they can actually make a change in the world. So, and uh, I think Gen Z, it's not like we only want and as a generation to work for non-profit organizations or stuff like that. We just want to have a job that we feel uh, we feel are, we are valued in and the company has also some like nice values that we are we agree with. But what, what are we seeking for? Is it only our values being recognized um, to sustain the diversity? What about maybe the financial aspects? Do you feel like it also has a big grip on us or it's a bit different uh, comparing to other generations. Ada, maybe you wanted to say something. Uh, I think like financial stabil stabilization is very important. Like uh, I like to earn money and have like, you know, I, I get a great energy from the workshops with the kids and stuff like that. But I can't put, I always say, I can't put energy into like, you know, <laughs> I, I can't eat it. <laughs> so I need some money like to live and uh, to pay my checks and stuff like that. Uh, it's not like the most important value for me, but it like, I can't like, it plays a big uh, role in it. Definitely, for sure. Um, I wanted also to ask you, Adesio, um, if you had any chances to see the differences in um, reacting and perceiving um, the job in Gen Z uh, working with you. What I meant with that question is, for example, when I'm communicating with my team and I'm doing some tasks, uh, if I don't get an immediate response that everything was done okay, or not okay, I will be panicking inside, I want to be able to, um, to you know, uh, continue on with the work. One of the panelists yesterday mentioned that it's probably because all of us are addicted to social media, so put an, uh, you put an, um, an image on Instagram and you receive a like and you're like, okay, I did a great job. So I probably need this kind of validation um, during, during um, any job I, I'm doing. Have you, men have you ever seen or observed this kind of little quirks which are not typical for, for maybe, say, let's say, some, someone from older generations. I think there's one thing about Gen Z. Let's not talk just about good things. Yeah? It's, a, it's a generation which is dopamine addicted. Yeah? You need to see the number of likes that you have on Instagram, and if you have one day where nobody liked any of your posts, it's a, it's a disaster. And, and I think that's, that, that's maybe an overgeneralization, right? Not everybody's like that. But I think people need to be recognized, yeah? Like that's something that's sure. always out there in, in a way or another, right? 
Uh, and I think people just describe that as a, as a current phenomenon because they haven't been actually observing that in the past. Yeah? And uh, there's people that, for example, from other generations, that's like a, when I say that uh, uh, my mom was crazy, mom, if you're watching that, I mean that in a, in a good way, okay? It's, uh, uh, that means people that, are, that they were born in a, in a different year, but they have some kind, that kind of drive and attitudes uh, of uh, younger generations, yeah? I've, I've been a lucky guy to have a mom which uh, was interested to get a few diplomas, learn different languages, travel, uh, see things around, question things, and, and I see most of that values, uh, for example, in my kids, yeah? They're growing, they, they, I don't know in which generation they'll be placed. Uh, there's, I we, think the next one is alpha, but I don't know how yeah, far. We, we are running out of letters, right? So it's like <laughs> then, uh, then uh, but it, it's again, yeah? it's like uh, if the question is if I can recognize some of the trends on, on Gen Z, uh, I can tell from my experiences working with, with younger people, yeah, which is like which has been probably always, yeah. Um, there's always like when you go. I mean, I've had the opportunity of joining different companies over time, yeah. And when you join the company, it's at this moment when you go there and you see the people which are there, like working for 30 years already, and they look at you, give you a tap on your shoulder, and say. You're the new guy here, just start, you know nothing. I, I'm, I'm going to tell you all the stuff that you need to know. I'm just like, okay, pops, thanks, thanks for the advice. I'll, I'll go the other way, yeah? And then you look at people which are younger than you that, actually, that they actually do exactly the same thing with you. And that's when you realize that uh, you belong to, to a different kind of reality and, and you must really adapt fast, yeah? And... Uh, I got a great example coming from, from IBM. Yeah, it's like we, we've managed to, to put together a mindfulness community and it became a, a big hit. And then at a certain point, I just remember somebody, but what the hell is mindfulness? And how can that bring anything good to the company? And it was also part of the, the values of the people which I had been working with, yeah, that they were saying, look, there are things out there, yeah, which maybe not everyone would agree that are beneficial in a workplace, but we think it's really important. So what's your, what's your take on it? I say, I'm, I'm all for it, yeah. Uh, and I think that's maybe the thing across, gen it doesn't really matter, across generations, across uh, men and women, across people from different countries, which is about collaboration. And, uh, and that's, I think, the beauty about this Gen Z generation, yeah, that uh, they are bloody stubborn. Uh, they they deserve attention. They deserve to have a voice to be heard, and uh, and actually, this is something that uh, everybody is looking for, right? Regardless of the generation or on, on on which cluster you're based. I'm not sure. Actually, I'm actually answering the questions. I think. I, no, am I going in a good direction here? Yeah. I, I mean, I uh, <laughs> constantly get so involved and invested in what uh, whatever you're explaining. I'm just. I can feel myself getting out of the point and uh, away from the subject. But I just uh, generally uh, really like to hear the insights and you know your take on all, on of the questions. And definitely, you answered it in like every single word that you said. Irina, you're looking at me, wanted to add something and I'm interrupting. <laughs> but uh, the other thing I was thinking about but while listening to you is um, uh, on, the, on the one hand, right, uh, it's all about the fast pace um, and initiative, but at the same time, I feel that sometimes uh, when you're going to uh, the company where there's a, a, a bigger gap, let's say, between you and the person who's hiring you, uh, and their values and your values are very much um, disconnected. I very much uh, fear that sometimes when a person who has been working on the position for 24 years and been enjoying it will see me, someone who wants to, to work at one company tops three years and then go somewhere else, 
do you think that might scare some older generations off or uh, can can they Absolutely. go uh, it, it scared for sure my mom yeah it's like I was uh, I remember I've been calling her a couple of times and then she was like so you're telling me that you change your job again Look at what they are going to think about you. You know, like that's not good for your reputation. You should stay in the same company, work there for 20 years, get retired. Why can't you do like your mom did? And I say, really? It's like, <laughs> and and you know, and I'm not even Gen uh, Z. You know, like I believe every three years, yeah, that there are studies showing that that every three years, the kind of skills which you have in the workplace or for anything, you need to throw them away, literally, yeah. And I found uh, a good thing. I don't. I don't this to become a habit. Yeah? In my case, I'm. 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 I'm getting. I need to slow down a little bit. But uh, I've been learning a lot through, to that transitions. Yeah. And yeah, it, it does uh, makes a lot of people from from uh, other generations scared when when they look at that. But it, it, there's one thing which I which resonates with me. It's a, there's a great book from Malcolm Gladwell called Blink in which he really says, if you have a, a gut feeling, if you have like a, a kind of a, something that tells you, don't go that direction, don't go that, that direction. So, okay, uh, among uh, many things, I'm also a nerd, so I'm a Star Wars fan. Um, and um, Obi-Wan can be saying, trust your instincts, look, you know, that's what people should do. I, I actually wanted to add something here about your mom. It is like she she wanted you not to change the job so much, and I think it it doesn't matter like from which generation you are. Like uh, I was uh, talking to my father and uh, telling him, oh, that I think I want to like lose my corporate job because I want to get fully invested in IT girls because I can see how far it can go, and he was like. No, Ada, like, you need some financial stabilization. And actually, like, he has changed jobs many times. He owns his second startup now. So I was like, that, but you change up your job a lot. And he was like, no, Ada, you need some financial stabilization. So <laughs> I think our parent just wants the best for us. It's always like that. It's like, uh, it's me, okay? It's me. But you, on the other hand, do better, okay? But um, you honestly got me a bit scared. I mean, I am approaching a third year in Wolf Summit, so who knows, maybe a little surprise is waiting for me after the conference, as in being fired, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> but you know, if there is someone that definitely it's counting on support from the family, it must be you, Arina, right? Is your family supporting the choices, uh, your choices as an activist fighting for Ukraine? How, how, how are they taking that in terms of I mean, of course, right? And it's, uh, I'd love to, to hear about that. Oh, well, yeah, I can say that my family definitely supports me a lot. Uh, my mom, as well as my father, they, they, they say thank you for me also a lot for what am I doing. And they also inspire me a lot with their example that they're also still keep fighting in this long fight because like it's now it's very understandable that it's gonna be a marathon not a sprint yeah and i'm very thankful for them for 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 everything that they've doing for me and that 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 they've done i i know that mm, my mom watching it online right now and yeah mom thank you so much for for supporting me and always having my back. And I'm very thankful also for my dad, for the courage that he has and that he he trained me and he provided also the this courage to myself for, and yeah. I, I have the power for, for keep fighting also from them a lot and yeah, I'm thankful for them, and I'm lucky to have this support system for me. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I want to. I, th I thought you wanted to say something. I no, no, I just say thank you. Is that good? <laughs> no, but I also was thinking that um, so much support coming from you and. When I'm listening to people from a bit older generations, it's usually the criticism and sometimes uh, a, a big worry, right, about uh, about their kids. Uh, we just mentioned it as well. Um, even though sometimes it, it, it brings so much um, criticism and maybe stress, at the same time they were able to bring up such a wonderful people 
who became our parents and they were with us to support us along the way, right? Um, maybe that was something, as I mentioned right previously, that we couldn't uh, at any point have brought ourselves, but the gentle and maybe parenting that we received was something that um, put the seed which bl later on blossomed into the values and like um, outspoken and maybe even um, brave personality that most of the young generation um, have. Yes, I, 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 I agree with you. And uh, in my situation, my example, uh, I had a perfect combination of my, of my parents because I have like a late gen uh, X and early millennial. And yeah, I'm pretty sure that these people, and especially in Ukraine, they went through a lot. They, they, they've seen like, like guys, they've seen like everything in their life. I mean, I swear. And this also inspires me a lot that all that they've been through, all the really huge world changes that they've seen and that they experienced, they inspire me because like if to see what they what they've been through i mean like good and bad things and th this this inspires me of how strong these people how they they're capable of everything because they they're they're incredible definitely and i also very very thankful that I, I am that lucky to talk to them every day, that they're healthy and they support me and they show me the courage, that they alert me to have the guts in the important moment and that they that they taught me to they taught me to keep fighting and to keep keep walking tall against the rain, definitely. And I guess that also this mixture of generation that we can that we can we can see right now and w with who we are we can talk and that from who we can take this experience this is this is also amazing because um, as i said separating generations with these labels i don't really like to do this but in this situation definitely you can see the not the difference, but you can see how previous generations, they definitely different from mine. They are, their state of mind could be also a little bit different, but this is always very nice to learn something from, from them. And you understand that they can bring you a lot to your life. It's a beautiful thing to, to, to uh, I was talking to Elena and Oksana from the Ukrainian track that they have been here. And they told me, look, this, uh, we're not fighting with Russia from February the 24th, we're fighting for 300 years. Yeah. So, so can you imagine how many generations, right, got together with the same idea, and it's a very strong idea, and, and it will uh, prevail in the end, I'm pretty sure. Definitely, there is no other options. Ukraine will prevail, we will win. And yeah, I absolutely agree with your colleagues and friends who told you that we keep fighting with Russia, not from February 24th, for 100%. We keep fighting for 300 years. And for people who think that Russia invaded Ukraine on February 24th, no, it's not true. First, like in modern history, the first big invasion of Russia, uh, to Ukraine was back in 2014, starting with the annex, uh, annexed Crimea and the war uh, in Donbas region. Uh, yesterday was the it was was the memory day when the Donetsk International Airport was was uh, occupied by Russians and completely destroyed in next 242 days. So yes, this is definitely a very, very long story. But yeah, I hope Ukrainians and Ukraine will end it soon. And yeah, Ukraine will pre prevail, definitely. This is the most important point in this speech for me right now. And yeah, we'll keep fighting. And I would like to s say thank you again to all the international communities, diasporas around the world, all the 
people who providing support to Ukraine, all the private people who just... I've, you cannot even imagine how many people I've seen in the last three months who was just coming to me and say, yeah, I had a big family, but now they're all, they're all grown-ups, they have their own families, I have a countryside house and I can host up to 10, up to 15 people and I'm ready to, to give it to people in need. For, for for as long as they need it. So yeah, thank you so much for everyone who supports us, and thank you for have who having our back in this in this worst moment. Thank you so much. Indeed, thank you. But also ignore my uh, brainstorm because I'm trying to think about the way to pivot the conversation back. Because <laughs> obviously, we got lifted, I but in a very like righteous and right righteous uh, directions. <laughs> absolutely, I absolutely agree. But I also wanted to hear a bit more, maybe because uh, when you started off with the parents as, as an inspiration, which I feel is a very grateful and wonderful idea and the thought to share. Um, I also was thinking about your dad, Ada, as you mentioned, he has a second startup right now. Uh, you, your, yours and your sister's company, IT Girls, have you got the inspiration from there? Oh, I think like our dad was a huge inspiration for both of us growing up. Like he was always some kind of looking for opportunities to uh, develop and uh, he also graduated from computer science. So I think that's who we got our passion for technology from, definitely. And uh, he's, he's also such a huge help for us because, you know, we're very young, both of us. And uh, the corporate world, we need to have like conversations with top management and at first it was a bit frightening now it's like it comes natural for us but he was also such a big help uh, during the process I think and for sure the inspiration for us uh, in many many ways and I actually wanted like to add a bit uh, to the upbringing because you said Anna like of course it's a key aspect of each of every one of us like the our parents and uh, the background but I think uh, like when we talk about the activism of Generation Z, uh, in my opinion, it's not only like about the upbringing and watching our parents. I think it's the fact that from a very early age, we had our phones in our hands. We could see uh, what's happening all over the world. Not only like, you know, on TV, but actually you could Google everything. You had those social media. And I think that watching the bad things happening to the world, like the war, uh, and they were all over the world, not only in Ukraine. And the climate change and stuff like that, I think, affected us deeply, actually. And that's why we want to have jobs that uh, will do something good in the world, because we watched a lot of it like uh, during the years, I think, because, because of the fact that we grew up with technology from the beginning. I definitely agree with you. Uh, I also get the feeling that every single generation and everyone on the planet were trying to do something good, but maybe our definition of good um, has exactly changed because of the way we were perceiving the world from the very, uh, very young age with technologies and so on. Uh, we are slowly approaching the end of the panel, so maybe uh, each one of you can say a couple of words of maybe um, additional opinions or what could be the big change on your, um, in your opinion, that Gen Z or any other generation which is up to come that can bring to the workplace and the world? We can start off, if you want, um, Adesio, with you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, uh, words to someone from Gen Z. I don't know, maybe my kids will be watching this video one day. Uh, I, I would like for the, the younger generation and for, for the, the ones that are, are to come also to, to learn how to find their place in this world, to fight for what's fair, to be just to people, to, um, to live in a world where uh, we have always a win-win, not a zero-sum game where there's always one part winning and the other part losing. I think that's... Uh, that's that's a big value which I see for for Gen Z and uh, and and I wish to see more of that in the in the coming years. And I would like to add 
communicate well, like that's actually what I got from my father, that communication is key always, like in business and in relationships, in private and in public life. So I would advise like all of us, no matter like what generation are you from, to just communicate and learn from each other because like we have a lot of to learn from the older generations and they also have some things to learn from us, so yeah. And I would like to add that we all have to embrace that all the younger generation that come even after Gen Z, all the generation that, w that will go after us, they will be smarter. We just have to embrace it. I have a little sister, she's nine right now, and I'm pretty sure she's gonna be smarter than me, like much smarter, because this is how the world and how the evolution works. The world is keep developing every, every day, every hour, and probably every minute. And the important point that I want to say, let the younger generation Show, show themselves fully because yeah, experience is very important, is vitally, experience is cool, but let the younger generation always to have the voice and to say what they think about this situation and what they would do about this. So yeah, kudos to the all younger generations. I'm pretty sure that world will not stop developing today or tomorrow or in next 10 years. The world is flying with the space speed into new technologies, into new developments, new new ideas, like who would think that uh, like 50 years ago that it's gonna be a, like electric uh, cars that you can charge from your from your home that it's gonna be like smartphones in which you can do almost everything these days so yeah kudos to the young generation and let's embrace that the people that are coming after us they're smarter and they're gonna be better than us I could I couldn't say it better. It's really very nice to hear um, all of the advices and the the, the way you put it. I mean, do you just Anna, have some advice for the generation? Do I? I mean, I just in general in, agree with all of you, and I feel that the synergy of generations is something. Um, that is a very important thing, and every single thought that you said uh, is probably is, um, could, could be constructed into this synergy, um, and just. The overall respect and cooperation together is something that makes us blossom overall. And, well, I completely agree with every single word uh, you said, and I'm very happy that we had this uh, conversation together, and I thank you for being here with me, Ade, Desio, and Arina. A great pleasure, and I thank you for listening to us. And uh, Arina's mom, uh, I'm saying hi. <laughs> and thank you so much. Um, you, I'll give you your chance to say thanks. Well, thank you, everyone, and no, thank no, you. I, for I, I can just repeat everything you <laughs> said word by word, and I'm looking at the watch, and all the others are waiting. But I think, uh, Arina, you got something uh, with you that, uh, that we have been talking before about the, the flag of Ukraine, if you'd like to yeah. show here on the stage. Absolutely, yeah. Some interactive parts. <laughs> Sorry for hijacking your your, your <laughs> MC. <laughs> no, it's okay. You know, you you can never be. Um, you can sometimes be tired of it. So I'm I'm very welcome. I welcome everyone to take my roles from time to time. Okay, we can ask someone to take a photo. Obviously, if we have someone here, or no, we don't, but we can w make it a video. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> And thank you so much, guys, and for the rest of you, the ones who are sitting here in the hall and obviously the ones who are online, we have one hour for the lunch.